What's going on ladies and gentlemen? So the other day I wanted to finally build a full setup around shield in Remnant 2. I was thinking that since shield is very good at protecting you from damage even at low amounts it should be very versatile. And what I found is that you can become nearly unkillable and deal good damage all at the same time. You can pull this off with pretty much any melee weapon and low magazine gun together. But I found the setup that not only made Apocalypse Mode very easy, but made it extremely fun to play as well. Let me show you guys how to craft it. For your Prime class, you want Medic. This is going to restore a Relic here and there if you get enough healing, which is not going to come into play often since we are using the shields mostly, but in heavy combat scenarios, it can help out. Mainly, you want the 25% increase to all damage, 5% crit chance, and relic use speed. This class is going to allow you to take relics while getting hit and have excellent survivability. For the skill, you want Healing Shield. This will be our only source of healing outside Lifesteal and will grant us a large protective bubble of shield, getting us around 3 times shield in some occasions, which is pretty darn awesome. For your subclass, you want Challenger. This provides you with 35% more damage, 10% crit chance, a decrease to enemy damage, more defense, less stamina cost, and even more defense. This class is insane when it comes to the passive stats as they make you really, really tanky with high damage. The skill you want is Juggernaut. It provides three stacks of defense from Bulwark and increased movement speed, melee speed, and reduced stamina also giving you a massive 50% bonus to melee damage. Now, this isn't really a melee only build, but you will use your melee often and get a lot of benefits from it. The Challenger, along with its skill, is gonna greatly boost everything for you. Be aware you can switch either of these classes to your prime depending on how the gameplay feels for you. For armor, we're going to have full Leto Mark II. This provides us with a large amount of defense and a heavy dodge roll. Now, the heavy dodge doesn't matter much as we're going to tank most damage, and Challenger's passives make up for the additional stamina cost. So you can be a full Metal Guardian. This build also makes use of the neutral back dodge quite often, so the slower dodge really doesn't affect you all that much. For your Relic, you want the Shielded Heart. It grants a full shield to your health for 20 seconds. Shield is extremely powerful in Remnant 2. Just one stack of shield and you can survive almost every attack in the game. Use your Relic every 20 seconds of boss fights and you will already have trouble dying. For the Fragments, you want Stamina Recovery Delay, Health, and Shield Effectiveness. The Stamina Recovery really helps you in combat as we need to constantly be using our Stamina to gain all of our benefits. The health grants you more shield as it's based on how much health you have, and then the shield amount gives you a little bit into a second stack of shield when you get it. So overall, this relic grants you a ton of shield and will keep the melee combat going smoothly. Your primary gun needs to be the Widowmaker. This gun does not need to be buffed whatsoever and still deals excellent weak spot crit, which allows you to use much less damage trinkets and still get through fights without merely chipping boss's health. We're also going to throw on Boar so that when attached, it highly increases the damage dealt by your melee attacks. Boar is just meant for melee as you gain so many benefits from hitting both of them or even just one at a time. Also throw on the Slayer Mutator as it is the perfect item on the Widowmaker to improve both reload and the weapon's damage. For your melee option, you want the Spectral Blade. This is an extremely powerful melee option that gets a high damage ranged attack. Be aware there are builds around this item that deal crazy damage. We're using it instead as a jack of all trades. It'll hit every enemy on the screen, lifesteal our health back, grant us easy shield, and trash bosses when combined with boar. There are some traits to make it even better, but even without those, this build still works well. Equip Edgelord, which will increase your charged melee speed by 35%. That's going to be our main attack, and having it at a good speed is the best option. You also gain lifesteal from these charge attacks, which will again be our only source of healing. As for the sidearm, we're running the Rune Pistol purely for support. Its gun form is pretty weak and really only there to regen mods on occasion, but the mod on it called Death Brand grants 10% more damage to enemies, and if you pick up Echoes left behind, you deal even more weak spot damage, which makes it very valuable to increase our melee damage for a good amount of time. I prefer Bullet Weaver as a mutator for faster mod regen and a decent fire rate when you do want to shoot the gun. The most important part of the build is the trinkets. These items together will grant you near infinite shield, good weak spot damage, and loads of stamina. 
For starters, we want the Matriarch's Insignia. This increases melee damage by 35% and causes successful melee attacks to restore stamina. I tested several other items, but nothing was better than gaining stamina back every single time I hit the enemy. And this sword can sometimes attack several enemies at once, granting a bunch of stamina in an instant. It's going to let you back dodge smoothly and melee without standing there doing nothing, waiting on your stamina. Xania's Malice increases weak spot damage by up to 30%. This is the best damage boost I could find as when Boar is attached, you're going to get much more out of it. For boss fights, your main goal is to attach Boar as often as possible and hit the pustules. The Widowmaker also gains much better damage from this as well. Vacuum Seal will grant shield for 15% of your health upon picking up scrap or ammo. This ring is so much better than I originally thought, as you're going to be picking up ammo often, and the shield lasts 15 seconds. That's the longest shield time we can get from rings, and it's going to stack with our other sources very well. Rerouting Cable grants you some shield when you use stamina. It's a low amount, but you can get up to 50% of your health. This item paired with our melee combat will grant you half health shield all the time, as we're going to be using stamina constantly to keep the buff active. Lastly, we have Tightly Wound Coil, which grants shield when you spend 75% of your gun's magazine. This pairs up nicely with the Widowmaker to guarantee shield every single time you fire the gun. And since we have solid reload on it, you can keep that shield active when not in melee combat. Altogether, these items grant you near infinite stamina, high weak spot damage, and several ways to gain shield. You can reach three stacks of shield with this setup, and that basically makes you unkillable. Even on one stack, it's still tough to take some health damage. For traits, you want higher defense and a boost to the sword we're using. Fortify increases armor, strong back keeps us out of the flop dodge, triage heals us better which only comes into play if we use some blood root, vigor to tank more and gain more shield, stamina to have more use out of melee combat, spirit to gain boar back often, expertise to keep skills going, and arcane strike allows only two melee attacks on boar to gain back all your mod energy. It'll be great to increase your mod use, that I can guarantee. Recovery increases stamina regen, which allows the melee combat to work correctly when you eventually run out of stamina. Resonance actually increases the size of this slash effect you see me using on the sword here. Spectral Blade has an ability tied to the back dodge or neutral dodge that slices the entire area. With Resonance, it could pretty much hit any enemy on the screen. You do not need this trait, thankfully, but if you are able to get it, the build becomes much more effective. Lastly, we have Siphoner because we're going to gain all of our health back from melee attacks or just shooting the sniper. For your concoction, you want Mudtooth's Tonic. This grants more health, and since your percentage of shield gained is based on max health, you get more shield overall. I also recommend buying a bunch of blood root. With the triage trait, this provides a lot of healing for 30 seconds, and if you get in a tough spot where you don't want to enter combat without full health, this can get you up there. It isn't necessary as the shield will be good enough to protect you, but something that can still be useful. And that's the build. I did a full run of the game on Apocalypse Mode for this, and it took about three hours in total. Dungeons are a joke because Spectral Blade hits everything on the screen. In boss fights, it's the same deal. I took loads of damage, and the many ways of gaining shield just kept me going. You won't beat the end game bosses in under a minute, but your damage is solid enough, and only on a rare occasions are you gonna die. I think I died to the Ravager because he had a lot more damage from buffs, and his end phase is a little tricky to deal with. And then Venom got me because he had trapped on and that kind of just ruins his fight altogether. But through the entire playthrough, I only died twice, which was once to each of them. Annihilation couldn't kill me at all, and if bosses had Hardy, I still took them on with ease. The build is so unbelievably fun and easy to use. If you're wondering how exactly to use this build, here's a simple guide. Once in a fight, activate both your skills. Now shoot your sniper once to gain a bit of shield. Take a relic real quick and use the back dodge melee attack on your sword. This can be spammed until you're out of stamina. After, use the sniper while stamina regens and pick up any ammo you come across. This will literally make you unkillable unless you take repeated damage for way too long or stop using melee for an extended period of time. Throw out both your mods as often as you can and yeah, this one works like a charm. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if it did help you out, a like down below would be appreciated. I really fell in love with this build on stream the other day and then I did a full run afterwards just having a blast. Spectral Blade is really darn fun to play like this and the insane amount of shield grants a lot of leeway. Also using the back dodge for your main attack lets you dodge attacks while dealing damage which is huge in the long run. Overall it's probably one of the best builds I've ever played and I think you're going to have a great time with it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.